Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I was better when you were rubbing me, not rub my belly. Oh, so not your slaves, baby. Morning, Mrs. Griffin. Morning, Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Got some sunshine, got my coffee, got my notes, got my pug. Let's begin. I'm gonna do my thing. So a couple of updates before we start this video, which is going to be focused on imbalances and how you can fix them in pretty much two easy steps. Maybe three, two, two and a half. No, I haven't left Gymshark. In the video where it said saying goodbye to Gymshark, we were saying goodbye to doing expos with Gymshark. We weren't saying goodbye to Gymshark as a whole. We're still very much with them. We're so much together as a crew. Everyone you know and love is still working together. We're just gonna be doing a lot of different events and um, meetups outside of expos and there will be no more expos with Gymshark. Doesn't mean we won't be there all together. Number two, loads of you have been on about the Desire jeans and when we're gonna be restocking them. They will be going back into stock this weekend. We will be getting back in these ones, plus new blue and new black variations. So there'll be three variations for you to choose from, all going back into stock this weekend. So stay tuned on the relevant social medias below. As always, limited lines are available and when they are gone, they're gone. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this video. As you can see, I'm doing a re review with a view question from you with a view. This is one of the most asked questions that I get on a daily basis and is, Lex, how can I fix an imbalance in my body? And before we get anywhere, I want, blah, 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 blah. before we get anywhere into this subject, I want to clarify one thing. If you stare at yourself every day, three times a day, four times a day, five times a day, flexing in the mirror, <laughs> analyzing yourself from left to right, up and down, you're going to think that some things look smaller than others. You're going to get in your head that there's something going wrong from left to right. Everybody has a leading side. And especially when you're new to training, one side will be stronger than the other. It will be more stable than the other. This is just the natural behavior of the body. So don't worry. That isn't necessarily an imbalance. My left bicep is not as good as my right bicep. And they look the same. It's because you're overanalyzing yourself. But also these are things that you should be looking at every day, whenever you're in the gym, so that you can avoid creating the imbalance. Because obviously, the fix for an imbalance is to get your body in line, symmetrically, working in unison, left to right, side to side, equally. So this is something you should be focusing on and using every day in training anyway. It just so happens that by doing this, you can also fix imbalances, because to fix imbalances, you basically are putting your body right, and you should always be making sure your body is right in the first place anyway. Make sense? Some of the main causes of imbalances. One of the biggest ones is being unsymmetrical in your lifting. So that's allowing one side to not work in unison with the other and not being aware of it. And if you're not aware of it, it becomes the norm. And that means that you're not gonna be able to feel that you're out of alignment. Another reason could be injury. So you've hurt something, which means that the body will compensate. For example, I, I damaged my left shoulder at one point, so the trap came in to compensate and get a little bit all impinged, all up and around here. Everything got kind of messed up because every time I went to lift something that required shoulder stabilization, because it was injured and destabilizing, the trap was coming in, hitching the shoulder up, and that was taking over that stabilizing that the shoulder should have been doing. That then causes an imbalance because you end up hitched up on one side. You have to make sure that if you've been injured, you're doing the correct rehab, and sometimes you've got to let go of that ego, bring the weights back down, and restructure that form because you're gonna to have to train it to fire properly again, to engage properly again, and build those motor pathways back up that might have been lost because of the injury, because of the downtime, or because you've been compensating with other muscle groups for so long that you've now, the muscle's gotten lazy. Poor technique, this is one of the big ones. So that means that you're not setting the body into a strong posture so that it's able to move through the range of motion intended without the weight shifting on and off to where it should be. Now the body is gonna try and be as efficient as it can be. It doesn't wanna lift in isolation. It wants to bring in as many muscle groups as it can to move the object you're trying to move. So in essence, if you're just doing bodybuilding, that goes against a lot of the natural um, want of the body, efficiency of the body, because Bodybuilding is very rigid, very one-dimensional. It goes from here to here. Everything has to stay locked in. The body's gonna try and fight that. So it's your job to make sure that the body isn't allowed to 
cheat. And it's not really cheating, what it's doing is it's being more efficient. So you have to make sure that when you're doing things, a prime one being like chest press, that you are just pressing with the chest and then overextending into shoulders, which a lot of people tend to do because they're just trying to get the weight from here up there. And they just push through as far as it'll go until it stops, which means, you know, letting the shoulders go, everything detaching, and that load is then moving from the chest off onto the shoulders, onto the elbow joints, onto the wrists. You see where I'm going with this. So it's making sure that your techniques are researched and make sure that you are lifting the correct technique with the correct weight. Don't go ego lifting. Lift it, don't shift it. Moving away from A to B is not the same as lifting a weight from A to B with good technique. Why it is so important to be aware of possible imbalances. One of the major, major ones that you can look around any gym anywhere in the world and see and find guaranteed 100% is this. <coughs> Massive mate. The rounded shoulder dude. <coughs> This guy can be seen everywhere in the gym and it's even an actual problem in the mentality of some people because they think that this makes them look like a bodybuilder for some reason so they actually embrace this issue of having forward rotation in their shoulders. Massive mate. It causes weak rear scapula, it causes weak back engagement, it can cause a rounding of the back in many many movements and it is just a nasty nasty habit to develop and also one that's so very common. It's created because of usually overworking of the front delts and the chest and underdevelopment of rear delt work, back and being able to engage that scapula during movements. Your posture should be this. Chin in, shoulders back, chest up, core engaged but relaxed, not this with a pigeon neck. Massive mate, massive. Uh, another major issue is something called pelvic tilt. Check it out. Here's where we want to be. Lower abs pulled in, glutes not tensed but activated, and we have a relatively nice arch in the lower back, but here we're flat. What you often see is people with a pelvic tilt like this. So what they're doing is releasing the core, letting the hips tilt forward. It's called anterior pelvic tilt. Boom, a little bit of twerking. Twerk, 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 twerk. This is the body getting lazy. So the butt comes out, the arch in the lower back gets excessive and there's no engagement with the core here. Why is that a bad thing to have? Well, it's because it makes your abs lazy, it makes your hip flexors lazy, it makes your glutes lazy. It can cause all kinds of issues running through from exercise to exercise. You'll see it very often on people using cables. They'll kick their ass back and they end up with a stomach that's kind of rounded out like this. I honestly believe it's one of the main reasons we're seeing so many bubble guts in the bodybuilding industry at the moment, because people are getting lazy with the midsection. So ways to be able to do this is just to relax and stand in front of a mirror, rotate yourself around and see how it is that you stand. Are your shoulders level? Are are your hips tilted forward or backwards or are they sat where they should be? Does your stomach look like it's sitting flat or is there a certain part of it that tends to bulge more than the other? If you have an anterior pelvic tilt, what's going to happen is the lower part of your abs are going to tend to bulge a little bit more than the upper part of the abs because they're just not being engaged the same way. And again, you're going to have compensatory effects which then makes that muscle stick out further than it should do. Okay, so I'm going to give you a really, really simple thing that you can implement from right now that will guaranteed set you on the right path to fixing any imbalances that you might have up top. This will work alongside rehabbing, but you need to be making sure that if you've had an injury, that you isolate what's wrong and that you're able to repair and reactivate those muscles. But in terms of fixing just general posture issues that you may have developed over bad habits over time, this will work. So I'm going to go through the most complicated way of doing it first of all, which isn't complicated at all, but there is a simpler way than doing it this way, but this way gets it in your head a little bit more mechanically. It's really quite easy. Watch. So this is going to help you engage your scapula. It's going to help sit your upper body and midsection in the correct posture. And it's called up two, back one, drop one. So standing normally, I'm going to assume, let's assume you're all fucked up. Nice and relaxed. You're going to go up two, one, two. You're going to then go back one, and drop one. See how my shoulder position's changed? I'd do it again for you. One, two, one, one. Now I'm doing this relaxed. What I'm not doing is squeezing my traps. I'm simply just going up two, back one, drop one. Automatically, this sets my shoulders into a solid, correct position for posture and for setting the midsection. If you find that your head's dipping a bit forward, what I want you to do is stand tall, then I want you to think about pulling your chin towards your neck, like this. It's gonna feel weird as shit, you're gonna feel like Batman. Holy stiff necks, Robin. But trust me, you're just gonna have to retrain your body 
to stand like this and you've got to constantly be redoing this refixing it resetting it all the time even outside of the gym every time you catch yourself pull that chin in towards the neck stand tall this could even make you a little bit taller so from batman pose one two one one now you can see automatically that posture is way better than this God damn it, Lex! I gotta count two, one, five, two, one. Two. What were damn numbers again? If that was a little bit too complex to remember all the time, or you feel like you're squeezing a little bit hard and you're ending up very tight and tensed, here's another way of doing the shoulder setup. You're gonna place your hands here, nice and relaxed. Just put your hands up here. The moment you put your hands there, it automatically pushes the shoulders back. You see, it causes them to rotate backwards. From there, you're gonna leave your shoulders where they are and just let your arms drop. Bam, we've gone from here to here. The reason the up to back one drop on is good is because it connects it with your mind as to where to set the shoulders. It almost feels like a jigsaw piece going into place. But if you're struggling to do that without tensing too much because you're just, you're getting a little bit over anxious, simply put the hands on the chest and let them drop. One more little thing you need to do. So we've got our posture nice and set, chest up, shoulders are back, we've pulled our chin in. Now we need to make sure there's no tilt on the pelvis what we're gonna do we're just gonna squeeze on the glutes just a little bit I don't mean here we're not trying to pile drive somebody here just a little bit of a squeeze to activate them and you'll automatically feel that that little pushing the hips forward the moment you activate those glutes just a touch the hips will move forward at the same time all you're gonna do is keeping your chest nice and tall is just pull your lower stomach in just here so we're going from this you can see it bulging there we're gonna glutes Lower abs, and that's it. Now we're sitting nice and flat. Glutes in, lower abs, there's your posture. Now, you've got your posture set, you've got a little bit more work to do. So yet yeah, this means doing it before every single set. And here's a little handy hint. Don't give a shit about what others think about you in the gym. They have no effect on you. When I was retraining this shoulder because it was impinged, I was actually sitting like this due to that trap coming in my shoulder lifted up which lifted my rib cage up which lifted my hip up and causing me to be completely lopsided like that i had to literally retrain the muscle to sit it back down and disengage the trap how did i do this i would literally set my shoulders and if i was going to reach something that was higher and would cause me to have to let that go i would literally set the shoulders get on my tiptoes for the lat pull down and i would reach up as awkwardly as possible to get that bar with my shoulders engaged i didn't give two shits about what people thought i had to do that for about a month or two but after a while i was able to grab that bar and then just slot those shoulders back where they needed to be why because every time that you start holding your shoulders back and resetting you're engaging that scapula motor pathways training the muscle shazam one other huge factor is to make sure that your body is aligned. And that means standing and checking yourself in the mirror, looking at yourself. Are your feet parallel? This is a major one that people ignore all the time. And you'll often see if you look down at your feet, that one will be either slightly off like this, turning slightly out like that, or they might be completely buggered like this. This is a major, constantly ignored issue. All around the gym, you can look at people's feet and they're off, bench press. One foot will be here, one foot will be here. Squats, same thing. But if you're not paying attention to it, that imbalance becomes the norm and that feels normal. It feels like you're aligned even when you are not. So before everything, reset. Check the feet, check the hips, check the shoulders, set them. Abs engaged, like glute squeeze to bring those hips in. Hold the hips in with the lower abs being engaged and then try lifting, maintaining that posture. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter if you need to reset mid-set. During any time where you're going to retrain your body to do something, it's gonna slip back into bad habits the moment that fatigue sets in. So don't be bothered about having to stop and reset the body and then finish the set off. Yes, you might get a few less reps, but guess fucking what? The reps you're getting are doing 10 times what they were doing before. So you're now doing more efficient reps that are engaging more muscle fibers that are helping to improve your posture because you're training that motor pathway to maintain that better posture. Your core's engaged, your hips are in the right position. Everything is gonna start developing for the positive. You're gonna need to make that same posture hold 
throughout the sets, throughout your day. So you're gonna need to check yourself. You're gonna need to monitor every time you catch yourself slooping. Slooping? Not a word. Slumping. Not had enough caffeine today. Resetting is gonna be a very, very important part of you helping to build this better posture and help to keep the body in line. You're gonna to have to build those motor pathways. You're gonna to have to train the body into setting into this position naturally. And eventually over time, you won't even need to think about it because that's where your body will sit all day, every day. But you have to make a conscious effort to be checking on yourself and resetting. Driving in the car, sitting at your desk, walking all the time, check, reset. Eventually it'll just become a habit. That habit will become a trained method and that trained method will just become the way your body sits, stands, runs, walks. Make sense? So there you have it, my handy hints for helping to fix imbalances plus improve your posture in the meantime, which is very often the main cause of the imbalances in the first place. Like I said, this is something you should be looking at all the time, all day, every day. Anyway, because of the nature of our lives, we're developing these really bad habits of having the desk physique. If you make sure to follow the simple rules that I've put forward in this video, I promise you now that within one week, and in fact, fuck that, one training session, you will feel physically feel the difference that having to set that posture makes, not only to the way exercises feel, to the number of reps that you can get, plus control of the body and how little you might have had of it before. We'll always do my best to answer the questions that you guys want to know about and I'm gonna try and keep this little questions from you with a view <laughs> video set going. As always, this has been The Simple Truth. I have been Lex. Make sure to hit me up on the social medias that you can see below with any other questions. I think that's it. Rocks, what do you reckon? Have we covered enough things? What do you reckon? Oi, well, now, uh, yes. That's Imbalances Covered, new jeans releasing at the weekend, and yes, I'm still with Gymshark. Lex, out. We're trying to film here, Rox.